At a news briefing today, Minister of State at the Agri Ministry, Dr. Nura, first addressed the issue of the quality of dams constructed, accusing the research of lacking understanding of what he describes as modern multipurpose dams. The only thing he has not told us is what the objective of his research. If the objective of his research is to criticize, he will go when you have just started the dams and start telling you that there is no water in the dams. It's his objective is to assist in government development projects that to give a bird's side view to a policymaker of the progress of the work is also a different thing. If you go to a place, dams are developed where we have valleys and where we have streams or rivers flowing. If you don't have a river flowing through your village, it's not possible to have a dam. And where rivers flow, there is a slope. And that's why it's possible for a dam to be constructed. And let me answer the major question that is coming up, that 90% of the small dams that we are constructing under the one village, one uh, dam are not suitable or cannot be used for irrigation. The answer is false. We are now in a modern era of irrigation. People are making this pronouncement based on the fact that the only irrigation they know is gravity irrigation. You go and open the dam, uh, the, the, the valve in the dam, so that the water will flood the area and they irrigate. That type of irrigation is grossly inefficient. Because when you open the water, you have no way to control it again. The irrigation systems are three. We have the gravity irrigation, where the dam is on the higher side, you open and the water runs by gravity. Then we have the sprinkler irrigation, the one that goes around and sprinkles the water. But that one, you must be using a pump. Then we have a drip irrigation. So for somebody to say it's not suitable for irrigation, the question is, on what basis is it judging? It's not suitable for, if it's not suitable for drip, uh, gravity, can't you do drip? Can't you do sprinkler? That's one question. I cannot, because I don't know the basis upon which he said that, but my speculation is also that, as I explained, he had gone to a field as a researcher, seen some of the water that is there in May or in June, and said that, no, this cannot be used for irrigation, which everybody will come to that conclusion. But I'm saying, when was the dam finished, or is it even completely finished? What was his categorization? That how many can be used, how many cannot be used? Or is it a general principle that all of the dams cannot be used? It can be possible. He also gave an update of progress work done so far on the dams, stressing 88 out of the 437 promised have been completed for use. That is 44, 37 that have been awarded. I said that 30 of them are up to 50% completion. That means some are lower than 50%. 69 of them are between 50 and 89% completion. And 339 are between 90% and 100% completion. Then I added a total embankment wrapped with stones and boulders is 88. So those you can consider 100%. When the stones have been wrapped and those things. Each constituency has at least uh, this thing, 10. There are 57 constituencies. Upper West has 11 constituencies. So multiply by the 10. Let's now get some response from the lead researcher, Professor Joseph Yaro, and Charles Nyaba, who is also a peasant farmer. Now, first, within what period did you undertake the research, Prof? To your listeners, um, thanks very much for inviting me to um, share uh, part of our research findings. And um, so, um, this research, so first of all, let me just run through quickly what the objectives of our research was for. Um, in the first place, this was a monitoring exercise that the Peasant Farmers Association decided to undertake. 
because the Peasant Farmers Association considered the project, the initiative, as a very laudable one. Their members have been very happy and excited about it. They are in interactions with the district assemblies and with other stakeholders find this project a very useful one. So as a result, they decided that in order to be able to help government in, their, in achieving the objectives of this initiative, they should do a monitoring exercise and provide the evidence and advice that is needed to then make sure that this project um, provides the kind of usefulness that the rural people need. Now, so we decided that we wanted to find out the numbers of dams that are constructed within our study area so far. We wanted to examine how appropriate these dams were in meeting the following one, domestic purposes, two, livestock, three, agriculture. And then we wanted to establish also the environmental effects so far of what we have. We know this is at a nascent stage. So most of the things that we will find would still be at an initial stage. We probably would need two years to uh, elapse before we talk about an evaluation. So this is not an evaluation, it's simply a monitoring exercise telling us what, how, the, how the projects are progressing, right? What, is, what has gone on so far and what do people think about this? And for those on the ground, how have they been involved in these projects? How happy are they with them? Then at the end, we wanted to, we also visited existing dams, dams, dams that were constructed way back in the 70s, 80s, 90s, even in the 90s, to see, to compare this with the new dams that are coming up, to see how communities were benefiting from this, what challenges they had, even with the old dams, as to inform the construction and the usefulness of these new dams, which we think already should have been done before these new dams were supposed to be constructed. So we visited 24 dams, 24 communities where the dams were constructed. As you know, there are 89 dams that have been constructed. These 89 dams, we picked these figures from the various district offices, from ID officials, from district assemblies. That gave us the 89. And then out of the 89, we decided that our resources could enable us visits to 24 of them. So we visited 24 communities with 24 dams. And we held focus group discussions with community members and with small farmers who belong to the Present Farmers Association. Then also we decided that this was a government thing, therefore we needed to talk to government officials. And the following categories of expert interviews were conducted with district assembly officials, with uh, ID staff, Irrigation Development Authority staff, with the agriculture engineering officer for each district, and with the district develop I mean, district uh, department of agriculture, some of them being the district directors of agriculture. So our information is not pedestrian. The data we have, the interviews we have, and take note, this is qualitative. So we have transcripts. We have all the you know what we won't do is we will not disclose the names and what of you of our respondents. Now, but government I, says you will not find much water looking at the period of the research because the rainy season actually uh, is around June and September in the north. Yes, yeah, so um, we went in January and February and we went for dams that were constructed earlier on. So they were not dams that are being constructed this year, right? So and there, there are many partially constructed dams which we were not interested in because they are partially constructed dams. Right. If you construct a dam in the previous year, right, you should expect that. And these are not big dams. Much bigger dams will take a longer time to fill up. So these are dams that were constructed last year and therefore had all the, the rainy season for, I mean, for last year to fill up. And we are not interested. And take note, we are not experts of dams. So we are basically what we are presenting are the voices of the stakeholders, the voices of village leadership, of farmers, of agricultural offices, of extension offices, of the directors of agriculture in the districts. These are not our voices, and let, that is what it is. Let me bring in Charles Naba here. Charles, what's the reality on the ground from where you sit as a peasant farmer? Uh -huh. Charles Naba, you're on Joy News Prime, and I'm asking what the reality is on the ground. I mean, as a peasant farmer, you go to the field all the time. What do you see from where you sit? Thank you so much. Uh, uh, please, can you hear me? Uh, very well. Was, uh, I can hear you very well. Been, yeah. Yeah. 
You know, as a association, uh, we represent smallholder farmers in the country. So when the government announced that they were doing uh, one village, one dam, we were actually happy. And as part of our mandate, we needed to know whether the dams were going to serve the purposes of our members or not. It is the reason we commissioned the research. Uh, I listened to the minister said that uh, what was the objective of the research. Actually, we are key partners in terms of agriculture development projects because these projects are targeting us. So anytime government announced any project that has to do with agriculture, we are so much interested in knowing how the projects are going to benefit our members. Now, upon visiting the project sites where the dams were constructed, initially most of our members had high expectations. They were happy that the dams were coming because during dry season, most of the youth and the young ladies have to travel to down south to look for non-existing jobs. So they all thought that when the dams are properly constructed, they'll be able to do dry season farming. But when we visited them, most of them were disappointed because some few dams that were constructed could not hold in water. If you go to a place like Kajulu in the Kasnan and Kana East District, the first rain that came washed away the embankment of the dam. You go to Cabre in the um, uh, Bongo district, they, where the dams were straightened, no farming activities could take place. There's another dam at Boko in a, a community called Las Ghana. That place, the dam is already washed away. So most of the dams were not actually serving the purpose. Apart from the fact that the dams were not properly constructed, um, there were no canals, there were no reservoirs, so it means that the dams cannot be used for irrigation purpose. Mm. Now, the minister also said that uh, um, the dams we were expecting the. Uh, Let me bring in Professor Yaro as we try to get uh, Nyab, uh, Charles Nyaba back. Uh, Prof, government says what it has done is a multi-purpose one, which you lack understanding of how it operates. How do you respond to this? Um, but I. I would like to be educated on what the term multi-purpose is. Um, I thought rather they would have said that each of the dam probably served a particular specific purpose. I mean, that would have been much more... Um, I mean, already Charles told you that for most dams, that the validation... Actually, what we had in Bolga was a validation workshop. It wasn't the final, our final uh, report. And the validation workshop was basically to get the views of people we had talked to earlier on, the farmers, the chiefs, the community members, the irrigation authorities and assemblies, to tell them what our report contained, so that if they found anything that was misleading, they could correct it. That is why we had all those stakeholders there. Now, they all agreed, they all attested to the fact that for most of the dams, I think, you see, what we have to take note of is, and we are cautious in our choice of terms, most of the dams. We are not seeing all the dams. For most of the dams, they had small reservoirs. And a small reservoir simply means that if you want to use that water for many purposes, it will not go that far. I'm grateful for your time. Professor Joseph Yaro is with the University of Ghana, and he is the lead researcher. Charles Nyaba is president of the Ghana Peasant Farmers Association. He joined us earlier in that conversation. This is a conversation we've started. We'll continue and get to the bottom of it. Uh, stay on the Join News channel for all of that. Now, please.